how has that managed to do that? On its own. The screen is dwarf in the sprayer as it goes for a walk down the yard. It's gonna just screen a bit more topsoil and then we can uh, get finished off with that. I think it weighs about 40 ton. A lot of people won't remember that film, one of our dinosaurs is missing. It's a film about when they stole a dinosaur from a museum. And they put a sheet over it. Well, I just always think if you put a sheet over that, it'll look like, yeah, the film. If anyone remembers it, leave a comment. Fuckies! Always keep your T-Rexes on the lead. Can you get it round the bend without hitting the digger? DHL are here delivering um, stuff for the motorhomes, loads of duvets and stuff like that. £1,200 worth of Dunnell Mill stuff to go inside them. Yeah, he's around the bend. The, the conveyor sticks out the front, you see, so we didn't want to hit in the tree. Well, had them running, it's a rare sight. This had all uh, sediment in the bottom and it's uh, micronutrients. So I've collected the pipe up there. So there. Turn it on, let it fill with gravity. Shuck it and now it's all dissolved. So I've put that in the sprayer now, I'm going to spray in the barley. Suck it out now into the sprayer. This is the stuff that smells like a garden centre. It's uh, Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, all that stuff. Well, I thought it dissolved it all. Council have moved the fly tipping in front of this gate, which is great because I can get it with the sprayer. And then we've put our gateway blockers back in. So I've just been able to drive over them with the sprayer and straddle them, but cars and vans can't get through. So hopefully we won't get any more flights in this gateway now. Recycling as well. Uh, weigh about four to six hundred kilos, depending on the size of the tyre that you use. Just concrete in the middle. Back on now, spraying barley. Um, micronutrients going on this one, and then something to kill the broadleaf weeds and the wild oats, hopefully. So see some wild oaks in the crop if you look down. A bit bigger plants. So hopefully we'll knock them out and clean for harvest and they won't nick any nutrition off the plants next to them and will improve uh, the seed bed for next year because they won't shed the, the put seeds down on the floor to, to ruin the next crop on this field. All the soil at the back of the pile along the hedgerow and that was full of bits of concrete and stuff so I don't put it through the screen now, it's coming out mint. Like magic. Just to bust the common misconception that we put loads of chemicals in the sprayer and douse all the fields. So we're putting in uh, 600 and something grams of this stuff, powder, and uh, 18, just short of 18 litres of this. But there's 15 there, I've got a half drum over there. Um, that will spray 75 acres and it'll kill the broad leaf weeds within it. The broad leaf weeds within it. But not a lot really. The rest of what's going in the tank is just pure water out of the tap. You can see the geese there, just flowing off the field basically grazing this barley off here now. There's a bit of a greener patch there where they've grazed. This is the one I wanted to roll, but the agronomist put me off rolling it now, so we're just gonna have to make sure we pick some of these stones out. So we don't have to combine with them. There's some cheeky ones that are still on here, but you can see how they've just munched it off to the floor. It's like, it's only like finger high and all the muck that they've left behind. So if anyone wants, Goose, come and shoot them. 
scalped. I'm not sure if you can see in the video, but when I put liquid fertilizer on this field the other week, they obviously missed this tram line out and thought I've got it all. So there's a bit of a funny sort of stripe there where it's, uh, it's missed the fertilizer. So you can see that it's a little bit behind, it looks a little bit hungry. This is some of the last winter wheat we sown after potatoes with the clay and drill. You can see it's slightly wider row spacing, but it looks a picture at the moment. Uh, Heavens are a bit parched, but that's because it was so wet when they did the potatoes. But in the middle of the field, on average, it shouldn't do too bad. It's just a shame it doesn't all look like that, but, but that's the problem with uh, root crops. Adam's all filled up with wheat and calibrated. He's off to go and sow some spring wheat now. Andrew's strapped that dumper on badly, so I'm going to tell him to stop and do it properly before he goes to pick a Merlot up. Wait! Hold on! That's awful. <laughs> Strap's pulling it forwards. This one's pulling it back. But if he goes over a bump or slams on, that wheel could roll, drop that strap off. That one comes, and the, the next thing you've got a dumper on top of the fast track. So we must put a chain on here now. And then he's just going to go and get another one now, and we'll do the same on the back and pull, pull this backwards so it's uh, safer. Got a motorhome traffic jam in the shed. Uh, they've moved them out of the way so they don't get dusty when we're loading grain out. They've been parked in there out of the way. Back on the road, been and filled up. I've got, I had 57 hectares to spray, which is 5,700 litres of water if you're using 100 litres per hectare. If I had a new spray with a 5,600 litre tank though, Told that the New Holland was scratching in two weeks ago. Well, that's it now. Let me spin the camera. Nicely dried and baked now. Um, just wants a bit of leveling off, and then I think Phil's going to put spring barley on it, or maybe potatoes. That's the oilseed rape that the pigeons were eating. It's slowly getting away from them now. Headland's a bit parched because of the wet weather, but. Yeah, I'm pleased with that now that they've left it alone. I just stopped in this row to show you what we're spraying off. So can you see these little things here? That are like little Christmas trees? Well, the field's kind of full of them if you look closely. So that's what we're trying to kill off in this field of wheat. If you look, there's quite a lot of them. They have little yellow flowers on. Well, if you look across the field, they look fine, but if you look closely, they are there. Yeah, they're, they're called groundsels, and it's sort of cross between a dandelion and a thistle is probably the best way to describe it. So they have like the fluff that thistles have and dandelions, but they they like a bit, not quite spiky sharp, but they're, they're a little bit like a dandelion in that, in a thistle in that in a way that they sort of grow bushy, a bit like a little mini bush. Just found a, um, a tine off a, off a muck grab. I don't understand how it fell off because it's still got the nut on it and it's straight. This is a poor headland on this field of wheat and we patched it up. You can just see it now coming up in rows. So that's good. Hopefully in a few weeks this will be green right across and by harvest when we combine the field we'll be combining everything rather than having big burr patches and also what's growing in there then will stop the soil getting battered and beaten even more from the weather. Quick update on my dad's finger. The carabine has kind of gone in there and then come out the other side. So he's had to have 11 stitches because it tried to sort of like de-glove the skin off his finger, which was a bit gruesome. Uh, so he come out of hospital yesterday afternoon and he's, he's all right, he's just got a big bandage and a plastic thing over it. Stone trailer update. Uh, I've spoken to a couple of companies today. One that might be able to build me what I want, and I've, someone's ring me back on a price of one that I might be able to modify as well. So that's a fluid document at the moment. Uh, I'd love to think that we'd have the time to physically build one ourselves, and then we could build it exactly how we want it, and obviously it'd probably work out cheaper than buying one. But the reality of that is, um, we 
we just never seem to have time to do all the other projects we've got going on at the moment. So I think it's probably wise to find someone to, to either commission me one that, that'd be like sort of a prototype and probably other people might want one as well. And, um, or buy one that's that's ready done that only needs slight modifications, which is something that we can, we can do in, in the time that we've got. Uh, the drill, the new drill is, is due, I think, 26th of April, whether it'll arrive in me the 26th of April or it'll arrive in the country the 26th of April, I don't know, but hopefully it'll be this month. I'm just trying to get the dimensions of the hopper on it so that we know how high the conveyor needs to be for a stone trailer for filling it as well. Andrew's just arrived back with this project. It's a Merlot 266. It's had a hard life, but it kind of all still runs. Needs the brakes sorted, needs the guard putting on, bit of fiberglass in, new set of tyres. Look at that. Bit of straightening out on the back. The exhaust is totally sort of shot from the back, so I'll have to make something for that. Sort the silencer out, and um, it should make a nice tidy machine. It was right money because it's obviously tatty. 2002 on a 53 plate. Door catch is obviously not working as well. I need to sort that. But yeah, Project Merlot for Charlotte's dad. It'll be more useful than the dumper he used to have when it's fixed. But it does look a bit rough. To be fair, they never had the best of paint on them. And, um, you know, a few grand spent at it, it'll be worth sort of five or ten grand more. Because they're quite sought after at the moment now, telehandlers, they just seem to have all been exported. But, like I say, new tyres, respray, sort the mechanics out. Job's a good one. Yesterday's quiz question was a drawbar off a Massey Ferguson tractor. It could be off a few different tractors. No one actually can tell because I think they were all the same on different models. And it was found in the fields. It's all been lost years ago and uh, come to the surface and, and obviously it was found. This is today's. It's like a... It's like an office chair that'd be really uncomfortable to sit on. And it goes up and down. Does anyone know what we use it for? Or what Andy uses it for? If you think you do, leave a comment in the box below. Got like a little pedal on it as well. That's about it for today. Adam's finished sowing spring wheat and Sam is now finished working ground so we can get that barley done hopefully tomorrow. And um, here's an end trow of Toby, which he spent ages making because it's, uh, it's been done with pens, crayons. I don't know. It's good though. So thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe.